All right, welcome to another episode of Strange Planet. Thanks for sticking me in your ear. I get so many emails, so many requests. People want to hear someone discuss the flat earth theory. And I'm, I'm open to it. I, I, years ago, I had um, someone on um, my late night radio program, uh, The Conspiracy Show, talking about uh, flat earth. And um, I believe I had another gentleman uh, on, on Coast to Coast several years Mark ago. Mark Sargent. Um, the last name, he, uh, passed away fairly recently. Oh, Rob Skiba. Rob That's, Skiba. Yes, Rob Skiba. That's it. Thank you. Yep. That voice you hear in the back is, uh, a former commercial solar power developer, entrepreneur. David Weiss has been researching the flat earth hypothesis since 2015. He's the creator of the flat earth, sun, moon, and Zodiac clock app. And his uh, newest documentary is called The Next Level. Uh, the website, of course, the link is in the episode notes. The, um, but you can also hear him on the Flat Earth Podcast, the flatearthpodcast.com. David Weiss, welcome. How are you? Hey, Richard. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've been hearing your voice for many years on Coast and uh, finally talking to you face to face. This is great. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm totally open to this. I, I, I'm not a, a flat earther, but you know, um, I'm open to uh, discussing it because it is a fascinating subject. And um, let me ask you how, uh, I mean, you, you got into this in, in 2015. How did you get into this? What, what flipped the switch for you? Richard, uh, none of, you know, every flat earther has the same story that we were all you, we were all Globers and thought flat earth was the dumbest thing on earth. And myself, people, um, I had a podcast, we're doing um, conspiracy mixed with a little comedy and people say, hey, you got to look into flat earth, you got to look into flat earth. And I just banned those people from my social media. As a matter of fact, I did an interview last night with a guy, he said, I banned him in 2013 for suggesting uh, to me to look into flat earth. And I'm like, wow, you're the guy that I've been talking about for years. So it's only when you're forced to look because we've all been brainwashed so hard to say flat earth is the dumbest thing on earth. You know, hey, we could look into aliens. We could look into Bigfoot. We could look into all this stuff, Loch Ness Monster. But flat earth is off the table and that's programming. But one, when you take the time and actually break the programming and actually look and use the science, not the pseudoscience, the actual science, then you go, wow, how did I never see this? I just want to say one thing before, before we get into this. Um, a lot of the guests that you have, uh, where they're talking about planets, they're talking about aliens, they're talking about all of this stuff, and I'm not going to discredit their work. I'm just telling you they're right, but they're wrapping it around the wrong model, right? Richard Dolan, love the guy. He's waiting for disclosure coming from quadrillions of miles away when disclosure is only thousands of miles away. All right. So we're going to get into that. And if everybody just takes a little shift and looks at the actual science, the actual possibility, um, then you'll see that there's really only one answer. And that one answer is we don't live on a globe flying through an infinite space vacuum. That's scientifically impossible. All right. So um, I'm not going to offer up any arguments you haven't heard a million times, but I'm going to serve them up and then you can you can uh, absolutely disabuse us and, and so forth. So. The, the other heaven, uh, celestial bodies, the other planets, are they spheres or are they also disks, flat disks? Yeah, so that, that's a great question because when you look at um, a light in the distance, you don't, know, um, you don't know what it is, right? You don't know what size it is. Like I'm showing a picture here um, for anyone that's watching the video, and we have this light right here. Is that the moon? Is it a sun? Is it a sphere? You know, I would say it's the moon. It'll kind of look spherical. Um, but when you look at anything in the distance, any light, it merges into a sphere. And I'll just speed this up a little bit. And uh, as this thing gets closer, we see that it's a train and it's a whole array of lights that aren't a circle, but they sure look like a sphere in the distance. So unless you can touch it and measure it and know the distance, you can't claim anything else about it. So my thing is with the sky, you know, we're going to talk about science here on Earth that we can all test, repeat, observe. Um, and then we're going to talk about speculation in the sky and speculation beyond 60 degrees south, because those things are out of our reach. So we can speculate. That's OK. Right. But we don't need we don't even need to, because there's enough proof here that um, that, you know, that we don't live on a ball. So. Right. So I guess what getting, I was getting, getting at was, um, do you believe believe is not the right word? What is your hypothesis, your theory about 
other planets. Are they spheres right. or would they also be flat? Yeah, so so this is, um, you know, our consumer optics have outgrown the lies of heliocentrism. And when we zoom in on a planet or, or a star, you know, these stars are trillions and trillions and quadrillions of miles away, but we can zoom in and make them bigger. When I'm here in Connecticut, I zoom in in New York City. I can only still go so far. I can't zoom into a window, but I can zoom into a star and make it big. This is Mars I'm showing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mars is within the Earth system. In the flat Earth model, it is a, a light. You know, all of the planets used to be called wandering stars. They're all named after gods. Don't ask me what they are, but it's very interesting, right? So when we look at it, you know, the, the pictures we see of Mars um, coming from uh, two sources, NASA and Disney, and, you know, I'm not sure which one's more realistic at this point. So um, when we look at stars, you know, since we're looking at that, let me pull up some stars. Stars are, are really amazing. And, and Nikon, we have to shout out to Nikon. Nikon, uh, years ago came out with the p900 and then after that the p1000 super zoom camera um we could zoom in on things and bring them uh into great clarity so here is um i'm showing the star sirius oh let me get rid of that nebula okay this is the star sirius this is what sirius looks like okay it's a pulsing orb of energy um and what is it doing here i don't know i used to laugh at astrology and you know say um Astronomy is the real science, but when you look at astronomy, there's really just speculation. Michio Kaku says it himself that, you know, uh, cosmology is off by 10 to the 200th power. That's 10 with 200 zeros. OK, that's because they're just basing conclusions on um, speculation and unproven theories. Right. So when we when we look at um, all these different stars, it's uh, it's crazy what we see. And then what you see. Basically, that tells you it's not a star. Let's talk about the distance to the closest star. The closest star, excluding our sun, you know, people say, well, what about the sun? 93 million miles away. Uh, the closest star is four and a half light years, and that's about 25 trillion miles. Richard, people just go, oh, 25 trillion miles. That's not that far, right? If you are traveling at a mile per second, right? This isn't hard. A mile per second for one trillion seconds, you've gone one trillion miles, right? Mile per second, one trillion right. seconds, you've gone one trillion miles. Do you know how long one trillion seconds is? Um, guess? Million, millions and millions and millions of years. It, it, no, it's 31,000 years. 31, one trillion oh. seconds. One trillion seconds is 31,000 years, right? So if you're traveling at a mile per second for 31,000 years, you're only 1 24th of the way, 1 25th of the way to the closest star, right? And then you say, well, how could I see that star, right? Because light expands outwards. And as it expands, it's spreading out. It's not getting brighter. It's getting dimmer. Every time you double the distance to a light, it's half of the brightness, right? So we can, you know, I'm not going to do the math here on the show, but in many of my interviews, I, I, I lay it out for you. Um, we could not see a star at a light day away. I don't care what size it is, you know, or light week away or light month away. You know, we can really just exaggerate, right? The, the sun is eight light minutes away. If the sun was a mile over your head, it would fill the entire sky horizon to horizon, we move it 93 million miles away or eight light minutes away, it's the size of a dime held at arm's length. If we doubled that distance, it's a quarter of that size of a dime. And if we double that again, now four times as far, it's tiny. And if we double that again, eight times as far, it's small as it's a tiny a star at that point. And that's a light hour. Okay. If we made it 24 times farther, that's a light day. You could not see it. The angular resolution limits of our eyes scientifically tell us that we could not see the sun at a light day away. Okay, well, the sun's not a light day away. What can we compare this to, right? They tell us Polaris, our North Star, which is very bright in the sky. Everyone can see it all the time in the North with our naked eye, is 48 times bigger than the sun. So if I made it 48 times farther, 48 light days away, you couldn't see it. Because scientifically, its angular size would be too small. And that's not a theory. That's actual math and science and, you know, what our eyes can see. So 48 times farther, let's round up two light months away. At two light months away, you couldn't see it. Let's round up a light year just to be safe. You couldn't see it. They tell us it's 433 light years away. We see it as bright as the sun, just as a little tiny star. Okay. These are things that they don't teach us how to think about in school. Because if you thought about them, you'd be like, well, I don't know what the stars are, but I know that they're not what they say they are. They're close. They're small. They're within the Earth system here. Okay. Point taken. But 
back to my original okay. question. Sorry. That, I, that was, that no, that's was okay. No, that was that was that was uh, that was fantastic. But um, I guess what I'm gravity doesn't. I mean, do, do we believe in gravity? And wouldn't gravity dictate that the the the, the celestial bodies, the planets, and and our Earth would organize as a sphere, as a globe? So that's if you believe in gravity, and and that's a big one. And I'm really glad you brought it up. Let's spend a few minutes on this one, if that's all right. Because yes. this is a really important one because, you know, um, flat earthers say buoyancy and density sort everything else out. If I had a handful of, um, I had a, a helium balloon, some marbles and ping pong balls, and I held them over a pool and I opened my hands, the helium balloon will go up, the marbles and the ping pong balls will go down, the ping pong balls will stay on top of the water and the marbles will go to the bottom. That's because of buoyancy and density. But the question is, why are they going down and not sideways or up, you know? And the answer is something's pulling them down. And now they have the, the Einsteinian theory of gravity where mass attracts mass, but science has kind of switched over. I mean, that Newtonian gravity, mass attracting mass, and uh, they've switched over to Einsteinian gravity now, which is, uh, which is ridiculous. But let's stick with the, you know, the Newtonian gravity makes mass turn into balls. Um, they say that uh, it's 96% wrong. So they say, well, there's dark matter and dark energy that make up 96% of it. Richard, if you have a theory and 96% of it's wrong, and you have to make up something that's never been seen or measured, but you say, oh, no, no, it doesn't matter that I made it up. It has to exist or gravity doesn't work. I throw out the, I throw out the theory. So for those of you that don't know, gravity, according to mainstream science, is just a theory. And they, they, have, to, they have to ride it. So, well, if it's not gravity, what is it and how can we test? Okay. So the, the, the answer is, there's, a, there's the electrostatic force. Negative and positives attract each other, right? If you have a negative force and a positive force, they attract each other. The Earth has a neutral or negative, a zero charge, okay? It's a neutral or a negative. You know, that when you ground something, it's grounded. So the Earth has no positive charge to it. It's neutral. And everything in the air is surrounded by a positive charge. So you have this positive charge, that say, and the Earth isn't moving, and it says, hey, down is this way, and then buoyancy and density sort everything else out. So let me, let's see how um, I can do a, a quick demonstration of this. And where is it? Uh, um, so we had a bunch of where, if I could find it, it would be great. So we, um, we had a bunch of party balloons as I'm talking. What the heck happened to my, uh, my balloons? Sorry, let me just remind people while you're sorting that, David. David Weiss is with us, yeah. former commercial solar power developer, entrepreneur, and has been researching the flat Earth hypothesis since 2015. Creator of the uh, Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, and his news documentary is called The Next Level. And of, of course, there's the Flat Earth podcast. The link is in yep. the episode notes. And if you forget all of that, just remember flatearthdave.com. Everything's there. That just takes you to the Flat Earth Podcast. Flatearthdave.com. Everything's there. And uh, we have a new movie coming out on Flat Earth Day, which is April 22nd. Um, we, we've hijacked Earth Day, just so you know. And it's called, um, it's called Level With Me. It's the third series in Level. And here's a challenge I have for everybody. You watch all three Level movies, and you're in the boat with me. You're in the boat with me, and you're going to be down the rabbit hole. So here's, a, here's the thing. We had some party balloons, helium balloons. And we tied them, we got a little button just because for something in the metal, and we have a wire going to it, and it's neutrally floating a couple inches above the floor. This wire goes to a Van der Graaff generator, and we're about to put a positive charge into the, into the, into the um, button. And when we add a positive charge to it, it goes down. And then when we discharge, when we discharge it, it goes back up. Okay. So what, we, what did we do? We increased the positive charge. The Earth is a negative charge. We made it heavier. Now, we didn't make it physically heavy. We made its electrostatic charge heavier, right? So how can, we, uh, how can we test that the other way? And a lot of you have seen this. we got a tinfoil triangle. We're putting a, uh, a strong negative charge into it, and it goes up. So now, are we defying gravity? Or are we defying the electrostatic charge of the Earth? I'm saying we're defying the electrostatic charge of the Earth. Every single thing on Earth, living or dead, whatever, is, has an electrostatic charge. And if you look at the elements, the lightest elements have the lightest positive charge, and every one heavier has one more positive charge. So the higher the positive charge, the higher the attraction, the heavier it is. Lead is way up there with tons of uh, positive um, charge to it. And uh, so how can we take this a step farther? There was uh, MIT, 
uh, created what's called, whoops, I just lost my camera. Um, excuse me. MIT created the silent drone. Am I back? I think I'm back. Um, the silent drone. And what they did is they have this drone, no moving parts, no sound, and they just change the electrostatic charge and it flies. It looks like a bunch of uh, pallets and it just flies silently because what are we defying, Richard? The, the, the static charge of the earth or the made up theory of gravity, right? And you have to remember Walter Lewin, the great physics professor, he says it's an electric forces that hold our world together. Walter Lewin, right? Big um, you know, MIT, one of the greatest professors of all time. So. The electrostatic charge, here's something else they tell you, and I, and I don't believe them, but this is what science says. The electrostatic charge is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity. So let's pretend gravity is real. We have to pretend. And we have the electrostatic charge. And I drop something. How, how can anyone claim the made up theory of gravity, which is, you know, the, where electrostatics is 10 to the 36 power stronger how could you give gravity the credit when the electrostatic charge is 10 to the 36? 10 to the 15th power is a trillion times stronger. 10 to the 15th power is a trillion times stronger. So 10 to the 36, I think that's just another made up thing that they say, but they say it, so I'm gonna use it. All right. Pretty interesting, right? It is, it is, because my next question, uh was based on gravity. I mean, the the, the, uh, the center of gravity is in the center of the Earth's core, supposedly, right? The globe, and so uh, that's why when you drop drop an object, it drops straight down. But if the Earth is a flat disk, uh, if you were to travel, let's say, um, further south on the disk, and you drop something, it should the North Pole oh. should be your center of gravity, right? So no, no. Well, that's if the if the if the flat Earth, we're not the flat Earth is not a disc floating in space. And we're get, and let, make sure we have enough time. How much time we have? One hour or two hours? Oh, uh, we're gonna do an hour. But let me just take a quick time out. We'll come back and I want you to describe what this disc looks like, what the flat Earth looks like. Yeah. David Weiss stays with us. Don't go away. What would it feel like to reclaim your health, your vitality, to sleep deeply, to live fully, to address health at the root, at the cellular level? so that your body can detect damage where you have it. Imagine living younger, longer, having the energy to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Discomfort fading away. ASEA Redox Supplement harnesses the power of your body to heal itself, giving you the ability to power your potential. This is one of the most profound health, athletic and anti-aging discoveries of our lifetime and we need the world to know about it if you want to learn more about ASEA visit strangeplanet.teamasea.com strangeplanet.teamasea.com and be sure to text or call my colleague and friend Lynn at 443-254-6024 443-254-6024 to order or for additional information ASEA Redox Supplement. It's truly wellness redefined. And we're back with David Weiss, Flat Earth Dave. Where are we in the, uh, in, um, who was that? Was that Schopenhauer, uh, the three stages of truth? Where are we? Are we in ridicule, violently opposed, or how uh, accepted? We're in the final stage. We're, we're in the final stage of, oh my God, I need to accept this. There's, Richard, there's a lot of people um, coming out. There's a lot of big names. There's a lot of movie stars. They're all telling us to keep going. There's a lot of pilots that are coming out. Wait until you see the next level, um, which you'll find at flatearthdave.com. When it comes out, the, the level with me, it's a game changer. Wait until you see this movie. I'm, yeah, I'm going to send you links when it comes out. You're going to have it. So what is the flat earth, right? So we have the heliocentric ball, which is a lumpy rock with smooth water, curved water, which never, has never been measured. There's no curvature ever measured. We've done laser tests, some mirror flashes. We can see farther than, uh, you know, than a ball 100 times the size would allow. And then there's air adjacent to a void and of zero pressure, a vacuum of space. OK, that's, again, scientifically impossible. We can get into that. But uh, I, wanna, I want for your listeners to know what the flat Earth is. We're not a disk floating in space. We're not a disk where everything pulls you to the center. Like, uh, the, the, you know, if you Google flat Earth, you'll find... Um, a Vsauce video where it says, as you walk to the edge, you're going to have to lean forward. And by the time you get to the edge, you're going to be standing sideways. That's not flat earth. Every down is down. 
in Australia, in America, uh, in South America, in, in UK, down is down for everybody. Up is up for everybody. Left and right, forward and back is all relative to where you're facing. But down is down, up is up. I'm not standing anti-podal with my feet to somebody in Australia or China. That's not how it works. Every, everything is down. So what is the flat earth? If you think about this, large bodies of water at rest are flat, absolutely flat all the time. There's no curvature ever. You know, Navy ships, we have, we have many Navy uh, um, utility, um, artillery people that say they, they can pinpoint laser, pencil thin laser, another ship 100 miles away. Well, if the ball, if the earth was a ball, 100 miles, 24,901 miles around, which most people don't even know that defend the globe, um, there would be a mountain over a mile high of water in between them, a hill of water a mile high, but they can hit it with a laser. Same thing with submarines on the bottom. They can send sonar, hit another submarine 100 miles away, but there would be a mountain of dirt in between them 6,600 feet high. That's over a mile, okay? So there is no curvature. No one's ever seen it. No one's ever felt the spin. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. You haven't felt it. I haven't felt it. So why do people cling to this? It's a lifelong um, programming. So think of a puddle, right? What stops the puddle from flowing away? Well, the land around the puddle is higher and that's containing the water. So a puddle, a pond, a lake getting bigger and bigger. Our world oceans is a giant lake, okay? And the shoreline of that lake is higher than the water, period. And it's holding the water in. Is it an ice wall? Live, is it an ice wall? Well, you, uh, so the ice wall is a, is programming from the Game of Thrones. It's not a wall. It's the shoreline of Antarctica. It's literally just the shoreline, which has um, which is at many areas. It's a couple hundred feet high and it's ice. OK, and that's why they call it the ice wall. So here is the shoreline of our world. And then out here, out here, what's out there in the outer space outside of our pond? Right. Well, we're not allowed to independently go there. So imagine this. Imagine this. This is. What if there's more land out here? What if there's more ponds out here, right? What if there's all sorts of stuff? You know, Adam or Bird went out there and said, there's, five, there's at least five plots of land bigger than the United States. Well, that doesn't work on a ball, okay? And wait till I show you something. This next thing is going to blow your mind. But cut this out between the, with this, this white, between the white and the green. So we cut it out, okay? And then we wrap it around a sphere, okay? in Photoshop, in whatever, and then we teach everybody, this is where you live. This is it. What did you just do? You literally put people in the matrix. They're in the matrix. And that's a prison for your mind. It's the globe. It's stopping your thoughts from expanding outwards, okay? So let me show you what I mean, because this, this is, um, is going to be mind-blowing. Have you ever seen this map? This map was discovered in a Buddhist temple. Um, and it was published in the Hawaiian Gazette in 1910. And it shows, you know, 30, 40 other continents outside of, um, outside of Antarctica, okay? So we, um, we went on a ship tracking, uh, you know, there's sites that'll show you where all the cargo ships in the world are. And we see all these ships here. And then we see, we said, oh my God, look at this. Look at the, these ships. Um, looking for my other ship. We noticed some ships four or 500 miles inside of Antarctica. Think about that. How did they get there? Where, how did they get in here? Four or 500 miles inside the shoreline of Antarctica. And when you click on any of these ships, it gives you all the information, who the captain is, where it's going, the cargo, what dates, where it's, you know, everything. We click on these ships and there's very little information, almost none. One of the ship, one ship we found out it's 580 meters long, 80 meters wide. That's a gigantic ship, Richard. That's a massive ship. And all it said was it was registered in the island of Kiribati. Have you ever heard of Kiribati? Never, never. Okay, so where is Kiribati? So let's look out in the middle of the Pacific. I got a pin on it because you can't even see it. Here's the pin. And we're going to zoom in. Kiribati is literally a sandbar, okay? It's a, it's a sandbar, right? What's this giant ship heading south for? from this sandbar, okay? What is going on? Why is the US government and the Chinese government so interested in this island? China just gave them $10 billion. What's going on here, okay? What's going on here? And I contend, what if, Richard, what if they um, have shipping to the outer lands? There's a trade route. 
What if they're trading technology? What if they're trading food? What if they're trading people? Maybe it's human trafficking. We don't know. Okay. Um, just a, a slight little side note. The, we're, we're talking to some chip um, people that work for uh, you know, a chip development company. And the, the, the technicians say they work on these chips. They try to make them better. They work on them and they work on them and they work on them. They make very little, you know, they're able to, to, um, you know, to take the chip and reproduce it, but they can't make it any better. Then all of a sudden they need a new chip. And then the CEO goes, oh, here's a new chip. Work on this one. They're not developing these chips. They're getting handed these chips. So maybe these lands out here are, are more advanced civilizations. Maybe there's some trade routes going on out there. You know, maybe. We don't know. That's speculation. Anything beyond 60 degrees south. So let me ask you a question, Richard. Maybe you can use your word etymology. <laughs> if there is more land out here, we'll call it extra territory, and somebody came to visit us in here yes. from the extra territory, well, might we consider them? <laughs> Extraterrestrial, right. From right. where? Extraterrestrial. From, from where? From, from, our, from the Earth. outer space. From outer space. From the outer uh, space. Outer, the outer space. The outer space, right. 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 So, now, so Interesting. remember before I was talking about the closest star, 25 trillion miles away with a vacuum in between. We've got burning balls of gas in a vacuum, scientifically impossible. We have 25 trillion miles, ridiculous. And then we have a little Earth. And somehow we maintain in this perfect orbit, we're traveling, you know, four and a half billion miles a year. And, um, you know, and all the stars reset every year, but that's impossible. Now, what about if we put everything here on the earth plane? Okay. What if we put everything here on the earth plane? What happens then? That is scientifically possible. Now, is there more land beyond Antarctica? I don't know. I think there is. It makes sense to me. Okay. Right. But we just want the right to explore. I, I want to come back to the curvature of the earth. Um, okay. What about the these studies where they have or experiments? You have someone on shore with a laser, and let's say they're mm. pointing it at the mast of a boat, and it's it's docked, so they can mark on the mast where the laser is hitting. And then, as the boat goes further and further out, and they hit it with a laser again, you can see the the laser hitting the mast higher and higher up the mast because the boat is as it's approaching the horizon, it's going, it's lower. So it's demonstrating the curvature of the earth. So, so that's what you think, but that's that we're not, we're not taught um, what's really going on there and how perspective works. Okay. So I'm going to show you um, a, a sailboat right now. We don't see a sailboat out here, but we're taking our Nikon camera and we're zooming in. And when we zoom in, we're increasing the angular size. And as we increase the angular size, all of a sudden you can see a boat there. It right. wasn't there a minute ago. Now, it's not over the curve. It's out of your eye's ability to see. Now, watch the bottom of this boat. These little waves in the foreground, like my finger, yes. are going to block the boat. The boat looks like it's going over the curve, but it's really just going, it's getting smaller due to perspective. And the little bumps on the water, the little waves on the water in the foreground make it look like it's going over the curve. Okay. Here's another one I just filmed the other day. Look at this boat here. This is way out here. Now, these, the, it's going behind these waves. We're losing the boat. And if it went out farther, it would, the sail would be gone because these waves here are a mile or so in front of this boat, okay? And it's creating a false horizon, okay? Mm -hmm. It's creating a false horizon. And that's why things disappear from the bottom up. But we can zoom in most of the time and bring them back. And the other problem is, like we can see boats, like I don't know how far these boats are, but we can see boats that are, you know, we can tell this boat's on the water. It's behind that boat. We just saw it. And we've seen boats um, with, from a foot off the ground on a calm day, 17 miles away. That would make the radius of the earth have to be more than, than um, 100,000 miles. It was more than 100 times longer than they, they tell us the radius is of the earth. They tell us the radius is just under 4,000 um, and it would, it would be a hundred times bigger than that, okay? If we use their math again. So there is no R value of the earth, the radius of the earth. It is a made up number, okay? Captain Cook went around Antarctica. It should have been 10 to 13,000 miles. He went over 60,000 miles. That makes no sense. It makes perfect sense on a flat earth, okay? Perfect sense. Okay, sticking with the curvature. Uh, you mentioned the North Star, Polaris. 
and yes. up here in uh, in Canada, I mean, you look uh, straight up, and it's right overhead, Polaris. The eye, yes. The eye. As you go further south, and it's you know it's stationary, but that star appears closer and closer to the horizon, and you can go far enough south where it actually you don't even see Polaris. How do we explain that if the Earth is flat? So. If you go out on a cloudy day, you know, a day where there's puffy clouds, so we look up this cloud here, let's say it's 5,000 feet above me, and this cloud over here is about to merge with the horizon. It's yes. the same thing with the stars. Richard, you and I are in a room, a big, a big room, um, you know, I don't know, big, just a big auditorium, and there's lights in the ceiling, and they're in random order, and we're like, oh, look, there's a starfish, and there's an elephant, and there's an octopus. And you're like, yeah, I, I could see that. And then we expand that room to the size of New York City right? Several miles, miles wide. And I send you five miles away from me, right? In less than a mile, I can't see you anymore because the ceiling and the floor have merged together. You're five miles away, can't hear me. So I call you on your cell phone. I say, hey, Richard, look up. Do you see that starfish? You see that octopus? And you're like, no, I see a horse. I see a zebra. I see other stars. And I'm like, well, that must mean the floor of this room is a sphere. And I'm like, no, Richard, it's just perspective. You can't see the North Star, because it's far away and it merges into the horizon due to perspective, okay? Due to perspective. So, so when you look down the street at streetlights, they're all at the same height, okay? But they look like they're going down, right? Right. They look like they're going down. So let me, um, I, have a, I have one a quick example I could show you. So, so I have a bunch of lines on the screen here, okay? And what can we say? Well, they're the same width, they're the same, the same width, and these ones are pretty close together. Mm -hmm. And if I add some more lines, now we can say, well, this blue line is maybe three or four or five times farther apart than the bottom lines. Let's go a little farther. And we could say this top yellow line is, you know, 15 times farther distance than, you know, the distance between these lines, whatever. But they're all about the same length. Now, let me ask you a question, Richard. Which is the highest line and which is the lowest line? This is this the highest line or the lowest line? That's the highest line. Okay, it's actually a trick question because it's they're all the same height. They're all at the height of these street lights. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. And and so I'm looking you know, at it two dimensionally. I know, but that's how we see. We see two dimensionally, and our brain is interpreting this three dimensional world, right? If you don't have contact, you know, con context. So here's yeah. one: yellow line and red line. Right, the yellow line appears to be the highest line, and the red line is the lowest line. And if we change it, I say the yellow line is the shortest line, the red line is the longest line. But in reality, I'm sitting here on a deck. The top of this bush is five feet above this deck. The beach is ten feet below this deck, and the where the water is. So this yellow line is fifteen feet below this red line. But that's not how we see it. Right. Okay. Excellent. This point. is mind-bending stuff. Right? They don't teach you this stuff in school, and then. Then you're like, okay, now you, know, you start putting it together. Richard, we're not spinning. We're not twirling. We're not whirling. We're standing on a stationary earth. Our common sense tells us that. Our God-given senses tell us that. But, you know, a bunch of nonsense was forced onto us by the Rockefellers um, to make us think that we're insignificant flying through an inf insignificant space where, you know, we're limited in our thoughts to a globe when the truth is there is no shortages of anything. And we're, we're at the center of creation. All right, so you mentioned spinning, which is a nice yeah. segue into um, Jean Foucault and the uh, the Foucault uh, pendulum. pendulum. pendulum yes, uh, it was like mid eighteen hundreds, and basically designed to demonstrate the rotation of the globe, the Earth. So you've got this stationary, what is it, about twenty eight kilograms, I think, this bronze weight at the end of this long rope or pulley or whatever you want to call it. And it's stationary, and yet uh, it does it does rotate slowly with the rotation of the Earth. And this is supposed to demonstrate again. It's called Foucault's pendulum. It demonstrates the orbiting of the Earth, the spinning of the globe. How do we, uh, as a flat earther, how do you counter that? So, so as you said, it, it's supposed to um, indicate that the Earth is spinning, but in reality. There's a, a motor in there and the motor has a bias. And sometimes they, st they start the pendulum and it goes the wrong way. So they have to stop it and try, try it again. And then another weird thing that happens during eclipses, uh, many of the pendulums change directions. Okay. 
doesn't sound like the spin of the earth. OK, but they're, they're, they, these pendulums have motors in them and most of them have already been shut down because they don't work. It's just a story that they tell us. They tell us that, you know, um, the water spins one way on one side of the equator and the other way on the other. And there's a bunch of hucksters at the equator that are pouring water um, biasly into tubs. And then they walk across the container and they pour it in from the other side and it spins the other way. None of that is real. The, the way the water goes down a drain is is simply due to the shape of the drain and the way the water has entered, um, entered into it. So no, water does not spin the opposite direction in Australia. I have two uh, toilets in my house that spin in opposite directions, and I'm not on the equator. So, so there's the answer to that. Okay. Um, you mentioned the eclipse. So I'll, I'll serve yeah. this one up, and you can hit with this one out of the park. So when, when we have a lunar eclipse, when the Earth passes between the moon and the sun, and we look at the Earth's shadow on the moon, it's... It's a globe. It's a circle. It's a globe. Yeah. So, so you're, um, you were told that it's the Earth's shadow, but we have a thing called the Seleninian eclipse. Um, that's where you're, 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 you're always on the top of the Earth from your position. And uh, during a, a lunar eclipse, the sun is on one horizon and the moon is on the other. And the eclipse won't start until one of them goes below your line of sight. But there's many eclipses where they both start above the, both of them are above your horizon. So if you're on a ball and both are above the horizon, that means the earth is not in between them yet. So it cannot cause a shadow. And the other problem is the shadow comes in from the top. It should come in from the bottom as the earth, right, you know, gets in alignment. So it's not the earth causing a shadow and you can't cast a shadow a quarter of a million miles um, onto a moon and show a curve like that. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. Take a basketball and, um, you know, and put a shadow on the wall or on the ground and then move it 5, 10, 15 feet away. There's no shadow anymore. It just the light diffuses. Right. So you can't have a shadow um, like that. And then the other thing, the other eclipse that is more interesting is a solar eclipse. OK, mm -hmm. now, what is the solar eclipse? Right. Here's the thing. The solar eclipse is when the moon goes in front of the sun from your point of view. But nobody from any camera, from any angle, from the space station, from an airplane with infrared lenses anywhere has ever seen the sun, the, the moon approach the sun disk, eclipse the sun disk or exit the sun disk. Even when it's fully eclipsed, blocking out all the brightness so you can look, no one has ever seen the moon, right? There's a couple of fake pictures online that are clearly photoshopped. But when you look at the, at the eclipse, we're not seeing the moon, we're seeing the sky. It's like a piece of the sun is missing. A piece of the sun is missing. A piece of the sun is missing. We're not seeing anything in front of the sun. I contend, I have an explanation, but I don't think, oh, maybe we have enough time. Um, I, I, I think that the sun and the moon that we see are not the real sun and moon. They're a projection into what I call our personal atmospheric dome. It's a projection. The, the actual sun itself is within the firmament, okay? Is within the firmament, let me um, see if I, I have, a, uh, I have a, um, a video I can show you. Um, where is it? I don't have it there. I can show you, I can show you on my app. Um, so, and, and here's the thing, just why, why I'm setting this up. Anybody that thinks this is ridiculous, I'm offering three Bitcoins for one globe proof, but you have to take the Flat Earth app challenge. Every day there's a new video Featured video on the app. Click it, watch it. Just watch it for two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, if you can send me one proof of the globe, you get three bitcoins. On my honor, three bitcoins, ready to go. Okay. If you don't want to wait the two weeks, you can hit the archive button and just start watching videos. But I warn you, if you hit that button, you're gonna be like, oh my god, I can't believe I never saw this live. That's the flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac clock app. Yes, it is, and you can find it at flatearthdave.com. Make sure you get the right one. There's already a fake one out there, like the fake Flat Earth Society, which wants to steer you away from the truth, right? You know, the, this is, uh, this we're on YouTube, but you can't find any videos. You search Flat Earth, you get all of the propaganda, all of the debunking videos. That should make you more curious, honestly. You look at any Flat Earth video, there's a Wikipedia thing that says, you know, Flat Earth has been debunked, right? Um, and you know, it's an archaic thing. Um, that's not true. I interviewed a woman 102 years old back in February, 2020. And uh, she said that she was taught in public schools here in Connecticut, that the earth was flat in the 1920s, found somebody in the 1950s that say they were taught, um, globe and flat earth, right? Uh, a little while ago, I showed, um, 
I showed the, the flat earth map, which is the Gleason's map that was in every encyclopedia, every library, every school book. And now it's removed. It's gone. Like it's, it's like, it's not in any of them. Why did they remove it? What's going on there? So I clip, I hit the eclipse button and I'm pulling up this video and what this is going to show you. Can you see this? You know, I'm going to make it bigger. Here we go. I can see it. Yeah. Oops. I'm going to go. There we go. So what I have here, this is the, the big one. The one on the right is, uh, is an eclipse. Sorry about that. Is a clip that I filmed. And the one on the left is one that is a rear projection onto a paper towel. Okay. So let me show you how. Um, well, first, um, somebody had filmed during about 90% eclipse, this weird thing. We got the, this bright light is, is the sun of the eclipse, but it's blowing out the lens so you can't see it. But we have these two things here. One of them is a lens flare. And the other one, what is it? It's locked to the sun. Lens flares move around as you move the lens. But that one is locked to the sun. And I say, what if that's the real sun and the real eclipse being projected into our sky screen? So how can, how can we test this? So let me just come forward a little bit. Um, so let me just remind people, so uh, if you're listening, sorry, uh, David, if you're listening to the podcast and you yeah. want to see this, go to the YouTube channel, like listen to the podcast and then later go back and watch yeah. it all again on, on my YouTube channel, Strange Planet. All right, sorry, go ahead. Like this is, this is, um, you know, I do, uh, I do, uh, if I'm not showing graphics at all, if I'm just doing a radio show, I'll uh, be much more descriptive. But when I'm doing a video show, I got to show you the graphics because it, it really helps. So, yeah. so what I'm showing here is I have um, a, a source light, which is uh, my light and I'm, I'm eclipsing it with a, with a bottle cap, a snapple cap. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm projecting it onto this paper towel and look, we don't see the, 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 the snapple cap moon. We don't see it but we see the eclipse, just like I was showing you before. We just see the sky, the paper towel is the sky, right? So we're not seeing it, that's interesting, okay? So then I made, I said, you know what? What if the sky screen that we see, and I'll show you in a minute what I mean by sky screen, is more transparent, which it would be, right? From lots of our observations. Um, and so I got some tissue paper and I did the same thing, okay? And when I did that, um, I did the projection and look, you can see the source right back here and here comes the eclipse and you can see it's eclipsing and this is exactly what we see and when we compare it to the actual observations it looks exactly the same ready look there's both same thing so is that what's going on i don't know i don't know but it who's, makes a lot of sense who's the projectionist dave you know the creator richard i i don't know you know like who's the here's the thing richard i i don't know your um your uh, spiritual beliefs, your religious beliefs. I'm definitely not religious. Before I discovered um, that we live in an intelligently designed system, I guess you could call me an atheist. I believed in evolution. I believed uh, in the Big Bang. I believed in a lot of nonsense because I never really looked into it. But then when I realized, wow, this place is intelligently designed, I have no other choice but to say there is a creator. Now, who's the creator, Richard? That's a lifelong journey, and that's our own personal journey um, for us to find out. And I believe that we're here to figure it out and have a relationship with the creator. Are we all the creator? Are we all little pieces of the creator? Are our souls the creator mind? Maybe, but um, that's something that we all have to figure out on our own. All right, we'll take another time out back with Dave Weiss as we talk about flat earth theory. What would it feel like to reclaim your health, your vitality, to sleep deeply, to live fully, to address health at the root, at the cellular level? so that your body can detect damage where you have it. Imagine living younger, longer, having the energy to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Discomfort fading away. ASEA Redox Supplement harnesses the power of your body to heal itself, giving you the ability to power your potential. This is one of the most profound health, athletic and anti-aging discoveries of our lifetime and we need the world to know about it if you want to learn more about ASEA visit strangeplanet.teamasea.com strangeplanet.teamasea.com and be sure to text or call my colleague and friend Lynn at 443-254-6024 443-254-6024 to order or for additional information ASEA Redox Supplement. It's truly wellness redefined. A strange planet, a strange flat planet. Flat Earth Dave is here. David Weiss, former commercial solar power developer, entrepreneur, 
and has been researching the Flat Earth Hypothesis since 2015. And the app is Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock App. Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock App. And uh, the Flat Earth Podcast. Again, all the links in the episode notes. Um, the, um, the shadows, because we were talking about an eclipse. And if I, yep. you, know, you, you stick a stick on the, on the sand and the beach and, you know, people can tell the time based on the, the shadow, the length of the shadow, the position of the shadow and so forth. If the sun, if this, if we're on a flat earth and the sun is overhead, how do we get those shadows? How do we get, well, let's tackle that. And then we'll talk about night and day. Yeah. So night and day. Um, so the, 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 you're, you're talking about Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows experiment. And Aristophanes said, you know, Hey, um, the sun's infinitely far away, which is weird because back in Aristophanes times, they were, um, they, there was, um, they were geocentrist, which means they believed that the sun orbited around them. Well, how can you have a little tiny planet with an infinitely far sun orbiting around the geocentric earth? That makes no sense. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. But no one's ever seen crepus um, straight, you know, straight sun rays. They always come in crepuscular, okay? Which means they spread out. Anytime you see the sun coming through the clouds, um, it, it, I'm trying to find uh, my crepuscular rays. Here it is. Um, they always come in at an angle, whether, whether they're refracted or not. Um, this to me says there's a local sun. So Aristophanes had to, hey, there's no shadow on my stick. I can see the sun at the bottom of the well and my buddy 500 miles away that somehow I can talk to. Um, his stick had a shadow and he did some really good math to figure out the sphericity of the earth. But on a flat earth with a local sun, um, it's it, the same exact thing happens, okay? So you can do an experiment yourself. Get a bunch of batteries, beer cans, lighters, whatever, put them in a row and put the light over one of them and there's like no shadow and then there's a big shadow. You can do the same math and figure out how, how spherical your flat table is. So again, math with incorrect variables can describe anything that you want. All right, so night and day, if the sun is always above us, how do we get the separation of night and day if the earth yeah, is so round and, and, and orbiting the sun? Yeah, so the sun is small, it's close, and you have to look at the layers of our atmosphere, okay? We have, we have an atmospheric layer, we have the celestial lights, and then we have the terrestrial layer. So here's a little experiment I did, I call it my flat earth kitchen, right? So, whoops, that's not, let me just get rid of that. Um, I don't know what's going on. My everything's looking a little little light here. Something's going on. Um, so I'm moving this sun along this straight level line over my kitchen counter. Now this could be mountains. It could be a uh, city skyline. It could be the opaque deck of the clouds. But I never go below it. Now that's just from a celestial point of view. Now a I have a terrestrial camera on the other end of the counter watching the same things. And I'm watching the same thing from the other side from a lower position. And we look at this line, and it's going down. And it looks like it's going below this. And this looks like it's almost at eye level. So it looks like it's going below an apparent horizon. Now look at this line. If I showed you this first, it's hard to see. I know. I don't know why my camera's doing that. Um, and I can see it. Yeah, it, it looks like it looks like it's going down, right? But now let's look at a real sunset. And look, it's doing the same thing. The sun went down, 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 down. It's going behind the opaque, um, opaque deck layer. And we're below it. OK, we can zoom in and open up that deck layer between the, the, the ground, but we can't look above it. And so it becomes opaque. The sun just goes beyond it. And um, that's how we see the sun. Now, let me show you another one. This one is going to turn you into flat earth. Are you ready? OK. Um, this is this is one that I filmed um, a couple of times. Right here it is. So and this only works on a clear day. You need a 4K camera. It has to be freezing cold, no humidity. So the sun was up in the sky. It was, and when, when it started, it was going down, 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 or away. But if the earth was spinning, it would have to keep on going, but it didn't. It went down, 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 and then it stopped, and it sat here. Now, my friends are down here at the beach. They said the sun set from the bottom up 10 minutes ago. I'm still watching the sun. It's not going down. Richard, it's going away. This is the super clear day, super clear, right? And it's going away. And it's going away and it takes its light with it right into the soup of the atmosphere. Replay over here. Okay. Replay. It just takes its light with it. 
and it's gone. And then if you watch, you know, if you're in a, a low lying area and the sun goes away uh, on the waters, the best or in can Kansas or whatever, the sun goes down, you can still see that little bright spot where the sun is because it's taking its light with it. If it was going behind the edge of a ball, first we'd have a sweeping shadow from the earth going up over our heads, which never happens. It just fades away and it goes around and it comes back. Richard, we have um, on uh, November, uh, on March 17th and 18th, we're doing the second um, virtual summit. The, this one's called the Equinox Summit. And we have amazing speakers from uh, across the plane uh, talking about all sorts of different stuff, lots of flat earth and lots of other um, freedom and health stuff. And it's a two day full summit. Um, I highly recommend if you think I'm crazy, come to this summit. It's a virtual. And if you can't watch the whole thing on Friday and Saturday, you, you have access to it forever. Um, check it out. You can find the link at flatearthdave.com. I don't want to give you a million websites, flatearthdave.com. Just scroll down. You'll see the button. Click it. Um, if you do that, it changes your life. You know, what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday, right? That's what people say, right? Well, it makes all the difference in the world. My entire life has changed. I am so grateful that I can see reality, even though it's pretty scary out there. Um, I'm glad that I can see. And um, when you unlock your mind from the heliocentric matrix, the helio sinister trek, um, you expand your mind and you, you reconnect with your true purpose. So uh, again, I'm not asking you anything you haven't been asked a zillion times before, but how do they keep something like this silent? All of the astronauts, you know, for example, um, and Edgar Mitchell, sixth man to walk on the moon, talked publicly about the existence of extraterrestrials and, and all of that. If he was, if he's willing to talk about that, why wouldn't he blow the whistle and, and say, you oh. know what, I didn't, I didn't see the globe from outer space. It's a disc. Yeah. So on the, on the app, if you hit the frequently asked questions button and you go down to, um, are all space agencies in on it? Um, and there's another one, are all pilots in, in on it? Um, are all pilots and scientists in on it? We have a uh, we have some lots of whistleblowers in there talking. And um, there's a Polish astronaut that came out a couple of years ago, and he was asked off the cuff, um, you know, um, is the Earth flat? And he said, yeah, it's flat. And no one's been to outer space. Uh, I believe Buzz Buzz Aldrin Buzz Buzz yeah, yeah Buzz, Buzz said yeah Buzz said uh, to that little girl you probably seen the video. She says, why don't we go back to the moon? And he like fumbled. He's like, well, because we never went and that's the way it was, you know? And then when he's talking on Conan, Conan's like, I watched you land on the moon. He goes, no, you didn't. You watched animation, right? So they're kind of giving us a soft disclosure that, you know, we never went. When you, you know, here's the thing, you know, I, I don't like calling anyone a liar. And I think some people are under mind control. Some people may be lying. Some people um, don't know what's going on. But in the app, I'm just going to pull up the images. And if we look at the lunar rover, have you ever taken a close look at this thing? Look at this thing, Richard. It's made out of paper mache, duct tape, <laughs> tin foil, curtain rods, right? Would you put your kid in this and submerge it in a lake? Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and then, and Richard, you know about the Sandusky uh, vacuum chamber? It's, they can only get like a Tor 6 vacuum. They say space is a Tor 17, right? And the walls are 10 feet thick made out of concrete and iron. Okay. Otherwise it would implode. How does this thing keep... Pressure. How do men go in here? How did they have a car in here? Here's the thing, Richard. You and I are nice people. We can't imagine evil on this level. That's why it's hard for us to see. But once you see it, you're like, wow, I was duped my whole life. Right? You got to watch my interview with Ruth. It's in the, the, the next level video. Um, she broke down crying because when she found out that it was true, she broke down and she, she, it literally changed her life at, at 102 years old. But again, just look this and Richard, watch my videos. If you go to flatearthdave.com, Flat Earth Dave interviews um, on the app, I have uh, there's an interviews button. If you hit the web button uh, right there are all my latest interviews. Your interview when it comes out, will be right, right here. So anyone want, listening to this, um, if you get the app and click here, you'll have a you'll see the video. Um, I, I show you hundreds of times on the space station of them getting caught wires green screens, screw ups, you know, um, the bathroom proves that they're not in space. I mean, the bathroom is the biggest thing on my YouTube channel, which is D I T R H stands for deep inside the rabbit hole, all linked at flatearthdave.com. I have a video. I'll just go down my videos a little bit called, I have to go to the bathroom, watch it. It's funny. And oh my God, space is not what they're telling us.
David, very quickly, uh, tell us about the uh, the Bitcoin challenge again. The Bitcoin challenge is get, get the app. The app is three dollars, right? The app is three dollars, and um, then you you watch the video every day for two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, I guarantee you're not going to have a proof of the globe. But if you do, before you send it to me, hit the frequently asked questions button. Make sure it's not answered there because you know in there. What about Coriolis gravity seasons? What about tides? All of that stuff is answered, and then. Then you're you're deep inside the rabbit hole, and then you'll you'll get it, and you win three bitcoins. Okay, um, uh, but one other thing I want to show you, you know, Brian Cox said there are no flat earthers, no civilization has ever believed in flat Earth. Okay, um, and that's not true. Every civilization uh, before us uh, believed in uh, in a flat geocentric Earth. But on um, on this is called the the friend finder, right? Let me just show you a worldview real quick. These are people that have my app. I'd say less than 1% of flat earthers have my app and a quarter of them have registered on the friend finder. Um, look at, look at this, look at the United States. This is insane. These are people waking up. There's hundreds every day being added to this because this is going out. You know, we can't get this genie back in the bottle. YouTube let it out a few years ago. They're trying to hide it now, but we're getting out there. We're going around and, uh, and people are waking up. And once you wake up to flat earth, you never go back. Once you wake up to flat, once you, Leave the globe, you never glow back. How's that sound? That <laughs> That's t-shirt? good. David, I have to commend you yeah. on your, your presentation. Uh, it's um, incredible. Very well put well, together. Thank you for this. Amazing. Uh, thank uh, you. You, get, you gave me lots to think about. You gave me lots to think about. That's for sure. Richard, I'm here for you. Anytime you want to have a conversation online, offline, uh, you have a question, you, you throw it at me and let me answer it the best I can. We don't know a lot of things. That's okay but we know that we don't know. Like Donald Rumsfeld, there's no knowns and known unknowns and unknown, unknown, unknown knowns. Well, we know that we don't know, but the thing that all flat earthers agree upon is the globe in a heliocentric space with burning balls of gas at un- impossible distances is scientifically impossible. There you go, Flat Earth Dave. Take the, uh, the Bitcoin the Bitcoin challenge. challenge. The Bitcoin, Bitcoin challenge, the Flat Earth podcast as well. All right, thank you so much, David. Great to meet you and I hope we can do this again. All right, Richard. Thanks so much. Appreciate appreciate you having me on. A new Richard Serrett's Strange Planet drops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Subscribe at strangeplanetpodcast.com.